Section 4.4, Properties of Logarithms, is actually very short. This is the handout that is posted. It really only includes these three things, the power rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule. And if you look at the algebra, you can actually see that they're closely related. So here's the product property. Log of xy equals log of x plus log of y. So let's try that on the graphing calculator. Instead of using base a, I will just use base 10. So log of 100 times 1,000, which of course is 100,000. The 10 logarithm of that should be 5. So let's see. Of course it is. So log of 100, when I take that apart, plus log of 1,000 will be 2 plus 3. And of course, it's 5 as well. So the multiplication here becomes a an addition. So the other rules are then the let's see scroll it down power property of logarithms. So you have log of x to the k power and you can pull the k to the front and then just have log of x right behind it. And if you split up that k x to the k here into x times x times x and x, you can actually see that it's closely related to the product property because that log x would show up k times. So let's look at the graphing calculator. Let's do not a 10 here. I mean, I do the 10 logarithm, but let's do log of, let's say, 5 to the 6 power. That's quite a bit. That's in the neighborhood of 5 times 5 times 5, it's 125. So it's like in the neighborhood of oh, 10,000, so 4 point something. There we go, 4.19. Okay, now if instead I'm going to do pull the 6 to the front, the exponent there in science, so 6 times log of 5, and guess what? I come up with the same one, 4.19. All right, and the third one is the quotient property. So this one here, and again, you can, it's also related to the product property. All there, there's just three different properties that are slightly different used and can be related to each other. So let's look again at the graphing calculator. I'm going to clear the screen here. And we're going to have, let's see, log of 77 divided by 4. It's going to be 1 point something. There you go versus log 77 minus log of 4, and obviously the same answer. When it comes to the x and y, as you can see here, I cannot do that on the graphing calculator. I will actually use symbol lab when it comes to that. But next, I just want to show you a little bit of history. This is the Wikipedia entry for John Napier. Actually, I had to look up his pronunciation, pronunciation of his name. And on the English one, I didn't find a good portray. So here's our couple on the German one. Whoa, okay, I don't know why that went so big all of a sudden. I didn't mean to do that. Anyway, here he is. And yeah, he discovered or invented, discovered, I guess, logarithms. I mean, actually, shortly before his death. He died in 1617 and he published in 1614. And really what it did was to take the multiplication, complicated multiplication, and make addition out of it or division. You make subtraction out of it, which was a whole lot easier without a calculator. Of course, what kind of calculators would they use? They really didn't have any, any at the time. Actually, the Napier's bones, I looked that up, is actually kind of like a mechanical calculator. I don't know what it has to do with bones. Maybe they just use smaller bones, I guess, animal bones. And so with that, calculations became actually much easier. And eventually it led to the precursor of the calculator, which is the slide rule, which is the generation before me who went to college actually had to use this one of these because they didn't have pocket calculators. So you have to go actually go all the way back to the 1970s and until then, that's actually when these slide rules were used and they're based on the logarithms because with those, it was much easier to add or subtract logarithms or multiply with a small number a logarithm than it was to actually multiply or divide. 
one of the people who used them right away actually was Johannes Kepler. I came across him in the last section. Notice he died in 1630, so he lived around the same time as John Napier. And when I go on there, he is famous for the Kepler's laws of not just planetary motion, but anything that orbits. And I discuss briefly this one here, that the period square is proportional to the cube of the distance to the sun in this case. So 2 and 3, which is 3 over 2, which is the 1.5 that I came up with. So he used logarithms right away as they shortly after they were discovered in the early 17th century. All right, let's go back to some example calculations. So here, back to the book, and really, yeah, it's just these three things in here. Applications, well, I already talked a little bit about applications, and you will see them also on the, let's see, let me push that back over here. You will also see them on the take-home exam. So I'm going to do some of these here. For example, this one here I've already prepared, so I'm going to go over to Symbol Lab and just paste it in here. There we go. It combines all three of these. You see the power rule here? So y to the fifth, x squared. You also see the multiplication here, times in between. You also see the division, divide by. Okay, so when you take it apart, this one here, by the way, is not it. That's from a previous problem. So when you take it apart, the 2 should go to the front of the logarithm. So it's going to be 2 log x. Then there is a times in between, so there should be a plus. And the 5 should go in front of the log, so it should be 5 log y. And then you have a 3D, we have a divide here, which is a minus, so it's going to be minus log 10. Well, since this, is a, the, since this is the 10 log, minus log 10 actually means minus 1, because log base 10 of itself, 10, is going to be 1. I'm going to click Go, and that's exactly what it shows here. That's what I just said out loud, and you can see here the steps. All right, I want to do 23 this one here. So log base a square root of x squared plus y a cubed, and I'm going to prepare that again. All right, over to symbol lab. So I typed it out. This one here, yeah, this is the last one I just did. So here, this time we have base a here, so we have this square root of x squared plus y divided by a cubed. Okay, the square root here actually means one half to the one-half power, so the one-half should go to the front, and then I have x squared plus y. Notice that inside here there is actually not a multiplication, so that means when I apply the logarithm, logarithm, the logarithm, it cannot be applied because it only applies to times, divide, which become plus or minus outside the logarithm, or the power to the power, but that's not there. There's a plus inside the logarithm, so it cannot be taken apart. Then after that, I do have a divide, so that's going to introduce a minus outside. And then I'm going to have log base a of a cubed. The 3 will go to the front. I have a minus because it was divided. And then log base a of a is simply going to be 1, so it just subtracts 3. Now when I hit go, it calculates that. And here we go. So here again, I was not able to take this one apart. Because of the plus here, there's nothing there. And technically, what it should have done with the square root is it should have taken the one-half outside. I might just prep this again and do it to the one-half power. Let's see what Symbol Lab does then. I look at the solution and the steps here, and it doesn't actually do that. And then I simply have the minus 3, as I said earlier, because this one here with the log base a is simply the 3 in the front. But because it's in the denominator as a divide, that becomes minus 3. So let me try that with the one-half here. All right, I prep that one. So I'm put it in here. There we go. That's actually the same thing. It's the square root of this here. So I'm going to click the go button. And this time it actually recognizes it as doing it. So with the power one half here, it pulls it to the front, which is still originally was the square root of this one. Same deal here. I believe that's perhaps what the answer in the back of the book says. All right, the next one here will be this one here. So log cube root of x y to the third, z to the fifth. I will already plug it in as to the one-third power, and let's see what happens then. All right, so I prep that. And as I said, I take a set of the cube root, I'm just going to say to the one-third power. So, and I know it doesn't say 10, but I didn't, wasn't, didn't know how to change it better, because I just reused the last one and typed over it. 
So here I'm going to have log of x to the one third power, which means it will be a one third in the front. So one third times log x. Then actually the one third here being an exponent for the y cubed actually would will take care of, of that to the third power. So it's simply going to be y with a log in the front. So plus log y. And then the z is not part of, actually the z is a part of the cube root. Ooh, I better change that before I go ahead. Oh boy, that almost took forever to change that. Jeez, okay, anyway, what I said about the numerator here still holds. What should happen to the denominator is, because I have a division here that will become a minus log of that, and then of course z to the fifth to the one-third will be z to the five-thirds, and then I pull the five-thirds to the front. So let's see if symbol left does that. And, okay, it's, it pulled the one-third to the very front, <laughs> And it leaves it this way here. All right, so it looks a little bit different, but it's still the same thing. I would still take it apart as one-third log of x and then plus log y, simply because the one-third takes care of the to the third power because they're both exponent. And, this, and then this one here would be actually one-third times five, which is five-thirds minus five-thirds log z. So basically, it's still the same. Let's see if they wrote it that way. No, that's the only way they kind of did it. All right. All right, I'm going to do these problems here, I think 29, and what did I write down? Oh, 35 and 41, so 35 and ooh, 41, do I really want to do that? All right, I'll do it. Okay, that's because it's a lot of typing, that's the only reason why I said that. So I'm going to, have to do log 3, 6, what is it? Log 6.3 minus log... Three, and let's see what we get. And it recognized it as such. Yeah, basically, yeah, basically what it's doing here is it, because it's minus, it divides six point three by three inside the logarithm, and you come up with two point one, and then log base ten of two point one apparently is point three two two. So. Let me actually check that with the graphing calculator. So what was it again? Log of 2.1. I don't have to type so much. Yep, 0.322. All right, the next one. I should be able to type that relatively fast. So 3 log x and then plus 2. I don't think it can do much with that. The only thing that can be done is really take the three back inside the logarithm, logarithm and write log x cubed, and then nothing happens. Oh, oh, actually the plus two here will go inside, perhaps goes inside, but that's gonna be a weird number. So let's see what symbol f does with that. Yeah, not a whole lot here. Of course, I just looked it up, two over here, would be actually the same as log of 100, which is two. So it actually should take the log, should take the 100 inside and should actually say log of 100 x cubed. Fortunately, it doesn't do that. So I figured to do it this way, do it backwards and have log 100 x cubed. So log of 100 base 10 logarithm should be simply two. There's a times in between, so it should be plus, and then there's an x cubed, so it's going to be log x with the 3 in the front. So when I hit the go button here, I get that, and that was the original problem. Again, symbol lab didn't do that, just didn't want to do it the, the other way around, so, so I started with the solution and come up with the original problem. Okay, I just noticed that I had paused at some point and paused the wrong thing, so I was talking to myself. So here we go. Oh, I hope this is going to work out. So this one is problem 41. And we can see that x squared minus 1 is difference of squares. x plus 1 times x minus 1. So something should happen here. In fact, there's a minus, so it should, should divide, and the x minus 1 should survive. And then there's a and then there's a 1 half here, which will become an exponent, the factor, and that's the, that's the power rule. The, so the factor in the front becomes an exponent to the 1 half power, which is the square root. And then the plus here becomes a times times x here. And in fact, that's what you see as the solution right here. That's what I just said. So the steps are that 
they take the minus right here and that becomes the fraction right there dividing then they simplify this stuff here again because this one here is actually the difference of squares x plus 1 times x minus 1 so the x plus 1 right here divides out and x minus 1 is left and I don't know why I did that just a moment ago and then let's see so they end up with this one right here and then it's the one half becomes a power so they did do that right here and then the plus becomes a time so times x and you can see that at the very end and there it is and that's it for the for this section and I'm gonna try to cut out where I talk to myself or didn't talk to myself or something like that.